Hey guys, what's up, Five here with episode number 17 of the EAFC 24 career mode with West Ham. This is the season one finale. We are there, we've made it. It's been ups and there's been downs this season, but after all of it, it does look like there is a slight chance we can get some European football. Yeah, it's going to be Conference League, but we... Um, We'll take that, we'll take that, especially considering the spaces where we were in at points this year. Uh, but coming into this one, this is going to be our final away, uh, sorry, final home game of the season. Taking on Luton at the London Stadium. There's only going to be three games in today's episode. It is Luton, Palace and Man City on the final day. Obviously we set out the plan in the previous episode. The fast five games of the season, I wanted to get 12, uh, sorry, I wanted to get nine points, but there is a possibility now, because we have beaten the two other teams, we can get a 12, and that is really going to solidify us in our chances of European football. Obviously, our final five games were Liverpool, Chelsea, Luton, Palace, and City. We've already beaten Liverpool, we've already beaten Chelsea. They were the two kind of two of the harder teams we had to play. Obviously, City we never really had a chance against them, but it would have been nice. But yeah, the, the goal was nine points. We're on for twelve, and I think that could just do it for us. But here against Luton, they are actually they're from the last time I remember looking at the league table, they weren't in the relegation zone. They might have fallen down into it now, they might have been sucked into it, but at the time of the last time I looked, they were surviving, which is which is crazy. But here, Tammy scores goals number 36 of the season. I think that is the goal that equals the record from Erling Haaland in the previous season. I'm 90% I'm sure that that is the one. Um, so there is now joint record holders in Tammy Abraham and that was number 36. That was number 36 there because I, I know for a fact, I'll ruin it now, unfortunately he doesn't break the record, he equals the record. So that must have been number 36 because I'm pretty sure that is Tammy's last goal of the season um, for us. But very, very impressive. And again, if we don't get European football... A lot of these players are going to be wanting out of the club. Obviously, it's going to be a shame if we don't get it. But we've built something here this season which is supreme. And if I had kept Tammy on, he probably would have been in that position. And he probably would have scored that header. And he would have broken the record. But it's nice for Antonio to score on his final game of his West Ham career. He scores at the London Stadium in his final game here. Which is really, really nice to see. As we do secure the victory. That is the nine point goal that we set ourselves achieved. Anything now is a bonus. Coming into the next game. Selhurst Park. Crystal Palace. The team we did our career with last year. Very, very solid little team. Eberetje Eze. What a baller. You know, if we lose Paqueta. If we don't, obviously if we don't get Europe. And we lose the likes of Paqueta and Tammy and... All these others, Eze might be a name on the list that we could try and pick up to kind of reclaim us into European football. But you can see here, the reason Tammy didn't break the record was because here against Palace, I decided to give Antonio a start. Kind of, I didn't want to start him against City because, you know, I thought we, if we start Tammy in that one, we could have a chance of winning it. So I thought Palace, we could probably beat Palace with Antonio up top and also with a nice rotated team. And we do go 1-0 up through Lucas Paqueta, scoring the goal quite early doors. Ben Rama almost doubles our lead. He's been a nice little player off the bench. But obviously, we need to keep him for now because Kudus hasn't fully recovered from his injury. And he probably won't until, af I would say, after the transfer window shuts. So we can either sell side Ben Rama and kind of just hope that Nonto doesn't get injured until Kudus recovers. Or we keep him until Kudus fully recovers, sell him in January, and have Kudus and Nonto as our two left midfielders, which I think is probably what I'm going to do. Um, 
as for transfers, I said it in the previous episode, I want some backup strikers, some backup midfielders, some backup um, defenders, and maybe a backup goalkeeper because Navas has been crying quite a lot on the bench. But it is 1-1 here. A lovely tackle from Mavropanos does let us have a little counter-attack here. It's really budgy. You know, Warpraz is kind of getting in his way there, but he does continue his run down this right-hand side. He's got Antonio in the middle. He's got a couple of others to aim for. Cuts it back to Antonio. He finds Ben Rama. Ben Rama finds the goal at the near post. Probably going to be one of his final goals for the club because I doubt he plays too much next season because Nonto has been just so good on that left-hand side. And Kudus realistically should be back. Um... Maybe in time. I don't know. I don't know. But he should be back in time if we get it for European football group stages, which would normally be um, where Ben Rabo would play. But to get his fitness back up and stuff, Kudus could probably play in those European games. And here, we're just holding it in the damn corner because we have the 2 1 victory. We need the three points if we want this European football. And here, really budgie, plays it across to Thomas Sushek. Great save from Dean Henderson does deny us the chance. But from the resulting corner, it's whipped in. It finds the head of Mikhail Antonio. And in the final few minutes of his final game for West Ham, he scores his final goal for the club. Absolutely brilliant. He scored in the London Stadium in his last game there. He scored here. In his last action, the last action of the game, his last action of his West Ham career. What a way, what a send off for Mikhail Antonio. But that leaves us with one game remaining. We are on 60 points. We have seventh place secured. Everton can't catch us. We can, though, catch Manchester United. We need a three goal swing between ourselves and United to get to that pace. Luton have fallen into the relegation zone, but there's still a chance of survival. Sheffield and Fulham, they're down. Top of the table clash, Liverpool and City, either team can win it. City have the advantage right now in terms of points, but we could win Liverpool the league title. Coming to the Etihad, I, doubt, you know, I very much doubt it. They are the probably supreme team... You know, Liverpool got their number. Chelsea got their number. Arsenal, seemingly, we've got their number. United, maybe not got their number, but we can put up a fight against them. Spurs, we haven't got Spurs' number. And City, we've probably not got City's number either. But coming into this one, we knew we had secured 7th place. A win, we could go to 6th place potentially if results go our way, but 7th place was secured. And to me, 7th place is Conference League football at this point, I'm thinking... This is Conference League football, you know. So, Europe is, is all but secured. We're going into the green competition. Haaland's scoring long shots from like, with like 100 mile per hour shots. 20 minutes in, we're one no down to City. That is undefendable, unsavable. There's nothing I can do there. Just after the hour mark, though, Phil Foden has the ball stolen off of him by Juan de Saka. And a counter-attack is going to come our way. Here, Antonio, uh, Antonio, Tammy Abraham, sorry, plays it. He's through on goal here, potentially, but he's going to cut it back inside to Lucas Paqueta. He plays across to Willy Nonto. And Willy Nonto, I think that's gone over 10 in the Premier League this season for Big Willy. And we're back on level terms with City. The chance is back on. The, the win, potential win at the Etihad is back on. But a corner for them. It's whipped in. We win the first header. We can't quite clear it away. We eventually get it only as far as Rico Lewis. A Kanji to De Bruyne. De Bruyne to Erling Haaland. Turns his man. Somehow keeps possession of the ball. It's played through to Bernardo Silva. And he finds the back of the damn net. And unfortunately, they score to regain their lead. It's been a long old season for our boys. You can see just how tired some of them are. Trying to find space here against that, this City defence. It's just seemingly impossible. Forcing us to take long shots. And, you know, Edison will be chomping at the bit if he's going to be facing long shots all day. But, yeah, the boys are knackered. I can't blame them. 
looks like the final whistle is going to go and we are going to unfortunately lose to Man City. But hopefully we should have secured Conference League football in the form of our league position. Here, Tammy could have broke the record there and he could have helped us in our journey, but it unfortunately didn't quite work out. And unfortunately, we are going to lose on the final game of the season, but, you know, no... No um, no problem. No problem, really. It's City at the Etihad. They have just secured the league title. Pep celebrating with all of his boys. And um, that is the season over. That is season one complete of the West Ham career mode overall. I'd say there's more positives than negatives. We have seemingly managed to compete against ultimate difficulty now we can get results against big teams on ultimate difficulty which is good which is what we wanted not quite results against Spurs or City but or Wolves somehow but yeah 2-1 Man City did secure the league title and as we look a full look at the league here City on first 89 points we finished in seventh on 60 points just behind United so it should be Conference League football. Luton did survive. Burnley, Fulham and Sheffield going down. But a spanner in the works. Chelsea, who finished below us, win the FA Cup and take our Conference League position. Liverpool won the Carabao Cup. But yeah, we are not in European football next year because Chelsea won the, league, uh, the FA Cup and took our position. Bayern Munich won the Champions League against Man United, 3-1. Bit of a crazy one there. In the Europa League, obviously, we were knocked out in the semi-finals by Leverkusen. Thankfully, they didn't go on to win it. Inter did, so Champions League finalists last year. Europa League winners the year after. Bit of a weird one, winning the Conference League. It's Fenerbahce beating Frankfurt. And as for... Europe's top five leagues and the championship. Coming up is going to be Leicester and Norwich and then one of Southampton, Leeds, Middlesbrough or West Brom. So potential for one of the relegated sides from previous year not to come back up. PSG, they obviously win Ligue 1. No real shocks there. Bundesliga, that's won by Bayern Munich. One point in it, a very close title race again. Actually, four points separating fourth and first is very, very nice for that league. Serie A, Napoli win that one. A one-point difference between them and Inter. Roma coming third is probably the slight shock there. But then, the biggest shock of them all, La Liga, was won by Sevilla. Quite convincingly, actually. Five-point difference between them and Atleti. And it was Barca in third, Real in fourth. And as for us this year, seventh... Third round of the FA Cup, third round of the Carabao Cup, and the semi-finals of the Europa League. Unfortunately, no European football for next season. Could mean some big outgoings for players who want to get European football. And actually, thankfully, we didn't get sacked, because I thought that was a real possibility come at the end of the season, but we didn't. We survived. On to next season, on to tomorrow's episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have, please like, subscribe, and peace.